Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 28 of the platform specific series of my 68,000 programming tutorials. This time we're going to be looking at hardware sprites on the Amiga. Now, hardware sprites on the Amiga are a little bit different to the cartridge, the console systems we've looked at in the past. Essentially, they're, they're a DM matrix, and what's going on is that the hardware is drawing the sprite from memory as the screen redraws. So they are hardware sprites, but they aren't as simple, if you will, as some of the other systems we're looking at. But they do have a lot of potential and it would be um, really inappropriate to overlook them because they, you know, they can really do some interesting stuff. Now, the hardware sprites essentially give us the option of having up to eight sprites on screen horizontally, but vertically, we can have as many sprites as we want, or we can even have sprites the entire height of the screen the hardware sprite just can't overlap. So hardware sprite one and two, so hardware sprites zero to seven or one to eight, if you prefer, could all be on the same line. And then you could have a no, reuse those same hardware sprites to draw more sprites below, but you couldn't have nine sprites on the same line because they can't overlap. And we'll see, I will try and force it to, and you'll see they won't appear later on. So that's the kind of way they work. And we just need to work with that. Now, these sprites work in the following way. Effectively, we have our chip RAM, which is the memory of the Amiga, which isn't upgraded, it's the sort of base memory. And we have to create a table within that chip RAM and then tell the hardware to look at that table. And the table will start with a definition that's made up of two words, a start position vertically, an end position, and this is the area that the sprite needs to be drawn for, a horizontal position, and then there is an attach bit and this isn't the same as the chaining of the Neo Geo. This actually allows us to increase the color depth of the sprites. By default the sprites are just two bits per pixel, four colors, but if we attach a second sprite we can make them 16 colors, four bits per pixel. So we're kind of overlaying the second sprite and adding to the color depth. So uh, of course if we overlaid for all of our sprites we'd be down to just four hardware sprites on the same line, but that gives us some potential anyway. And as I said, it, we can have one hardware sprite do multiple graphics as it draws down the screen, but the start position of the next sprite has to be after the last sprite for that hardware sprite number. I know this is all a little bit confusing, but we're going to have a look at it with some examples and I think it'll become a little bit clearer then. So when we want to use the hardware sprites, the first thing we need to do is we need to actually set up the pointers within the chip registers that are going to tell the hardware where to look for the, this data we're going to have to define. So there's a set for all eight hardware sprites and there's a memory address for each. We also need to enable sprites with the DMA control. We'll look at that in a moment. The bitmap data itself is relatively straightforward. The sprites are always 16 pixels wide. They can be as tall as you want, but they're always 16 pixels wide. And effectively, they have two bit planes each. So that's four colors. As I say, you can attach a second sprite, which will have the extra two bit planes to make it up to 16 colors. Effectively, what we do is we have two bytes that will make up the first bit plane and then two bytes that will make up the second bit plane. And then we carry on for the rest of the sprite. Now, as always, I've got some sample sprites here and we can actually create these with Aku Sprite Editor. We can just do save raw sprite here. And I've exported these crosshairs today. And I've also exported this character here, this Yorita character. And I've split it into two because it's a 32 by 64 sprite. The hardware sprites are always 16 pixels wide, but they can be as tall as we want. So that's what we're doing here. Now, you'll notice these are more than four colors. And what that means is we need to actually use two linked sprites together, attached sprites rather, and that will allow us to have all of those colors. Now, when you use Aqua Sprite Editor and you save a, a sprite, it will actually save a pair of files. One for the first two bit planes, which would be this sprite zero, and an extra one for the second two bit planes in case you want to attach. Now, of course, you don't have to attach, but if you want to, then that will give you the extra colors. So that's how my AcuSpite editor deals with the Amiga, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So enough chit chat, let's actually see the example working. So if I just fire up my Amiga emulator here. So what have we got here? Well, we got this Chibico character, and that was drawn during our last example. That's actually a bitmap drawn onto the raw bitmap screen. It's this new Eureka character and it's been drawn on as an extra layer. 
and that's of course two sprites attached to each other to give the um, 16 colors because it's over four colors now this is also a hardware sprite and this is also being attached and so that's got 16 colors but it's made up of two separate components and you can see the two separate components just here I've actually detached them and shown them separately as well as a second hardware sprite here. Okay, so let's have a look at the actual code that did that example. Well, the first part you can honestly use as is. You'd never probably need to change it. We need to set up the, the pointers to the hardware sprites to set the chip RAM up and get that working. So these are the chip registers here. They point to an area of chip RAM and these define all of the sprites that we're going to use and you have to define all the sprites even if you don't want to use them all. I'm not using all eight sprites but you have to define all of them at the same time. We then turn on the sprite DMA and we're just here and that will allow us to actually see the sprite which is a good thing seeing our work and then we've got our code that does the actual job and the actual job is being done by this code here there's effectively no other code doing any work. There's no commands to position the sprites. All of the code that defines the positions of the sprites is in this area here in chip RAM. This um, include here will have enabled chip RAM. So we're in chip RAM here, that's very important. And here's our definitions of the sprites. So here's the Y position. And this is a 16 pixel tall sprite. So that's hexadecimal one zero. So that makes an end of just here. So hexadecimal 80 to hexadecimal 90 and then we've got the X position just here and that will do us just fine. We've then got the raw sprite data following this pair of words here and you can see here that will define it. Now if you look just here we're using hardware sprite 0 and we're drawing with three different objects with hardware sprite 0 because as I say as long as the start position of none of these is before the end position of the previous one, we can use the same hardware sprite to draw three graphics just fine. That works just fine, but it won't work if we change it and they overlap, one of them will disappear. But what we then want to do is we want to attach a second sprite to this first one at the exact same location, so 804A here to 90, but this time we've set that attach bit, which is why there's an 8 here. And you can see here we're using sprite ame.raw. And then here's the second file that AcuSprite Editor exported, SpriteAmiRaw.2. And that's the second part. Now, sorry, actually, I'm pointing to the wrong one. This is the attached one here. That's the sample one showing the two separate parts. So we're loading the second part. We're drawing it to the same address here and here, but we're attaching it the second time. So let me show you what happens if I just change the horizontal position a little bit. So let's put plus three, plus three here. And we'll run this example again. Now here you can see there's something weird going on. Now effectively these are the two parts that were making up this sprite but now they don't overlap properly and so the bit planes are not being combined correctly. So we've got to move those two hardware sprites at the same time or it's not going to work. So that's the hardware sprite rule, if we're going to combine we've got to have them at the same position. Now as I said before the other rule is that the hardware sprites can't overlap. So you saw before that I was drawing the two component parts of this hardware sprite below each other just to show how that was working. But what happens if I change this from B0 on this second one to A8? Now A8 is before the end of B0 and this is the same hardware sprite number. So it's not going to work. So now we've got that first half, but the second half has vanished because we're, we're, we're trying to draw in the same position. And what we would need to do, do is actually use one of these other hardware sprites if we wanted to draw that in that position. Now, if we move this from here and we put it onto a different sprite, so if we put this on hardware sprite 2, now a8 is after 8.0, so this should work just fine. And if we run again, you can now see we've got our second sprite here. But the, um, there's some corruption at the bottom here, and the reason for that is we've not correctly defined the height, because the height is actually not matching the bitmap data there. So you can see there how we have to be careful with our positioning within this list to make sure that what we're telling the hardware to do is actually possible. 
So again, the, the principle is exactly the same for the wider Eureta character. It's just made up of two separate sprites here. You can see they're offset just here. So that the second one is effectively eight after the first one. And that will allow the second sprite to be lined up with the first one. And that will make the two parts combined to be a single character, as you saw before. Now we've learned how to get sprites onto the screen, but unfortunately we do need to understand the, how the Amiga palette works with those sprites. Now our basic background is currently in 16 color mode and so it will use the first 16 colors of our palette. The sprites, however, will use some of the next 16 colors and depending on whether they're four color or 16 color sprites, it will actually affect the colors that are used. Of course, in 16 color mode, it will use all of them with the exception of this color here. There's the background color will be ignored because the back the color zero is always transparent, but the 16 color sprites will use all of the colors as visible colors. However, the four color two bit for pixel sprites, the unattached ones will only use three of the colors from a four color set. And the set that it uses depends on the hardware sprite number. So hardware sprites zero and one will use colors 17, 18 and 19. Hardware sprites two and three will use 21, 22 and 23. 4 and 5 will use 25, 26, 27, and 6 and 7 will use 29, 30, and 31. So depending on the hardware sprite number we use, the colors will actually be different. And I can show you that just here. So what I've got here is some code to show our 2-bit per pixel crosshair here using sprite 5, and then to show it again just next to it using sprite 6. So if we execute this code, we've now drawn these two crosshairs here but you can see they're different colors, even though they're exactly the same sprite. And that's because they're being drawn by different sprite numbers. Now, this doesn't just affect the four bit per pixel sprites. This will also affect the attached sprites because these similar rules also define which sprites can successfully attach to which sprites. We can attach sprite one to sprite zero or sprite three to sprite two, but we can't attach sprite three to sprite zero or sprite three to sprite one. We also can't attach sprite one to sprite two. It's only these pairs that can attach to each other. And I will just demonstrate you that now. If we take the second part of our Eureka character here from sprite five, because the first part was in sprite four, and we put this into sprite six, and then we execute our code again, you'll see that the second half of the character has gone a strange color, and that's because we're trying to attach the sprite to the wrong neighboring sprite. So we do need to be a bit careful there when we're working out how we're gonna use our sprites. So there you go. We can use hardware sprites relatively easily on the Amiga. Now, it's not as easy as some other systems where it's really all being done for us. We'd have to maintain these lists that we point to in chip RAM. And if we were changing the sprites and the sprites were different sizes, we'd have to cope with that. Also, we might have to do some kind of sorting if we're trying to get more than eight sprites onto the screen, because obviously we'd need to make sure that we weren't telling the system to do things that are impossible. Now, if you're just starting out, what I'd suggest is you probably want to try and make things as simple as possible for yourself. You know, you might want to do something like only use hardware sprites for your game character or for sort of foreground parallax or something. Something that you know is never going to be a problem where you need more than eight on screen. Or alternatively, you'd have to be quite complex in the way you are handling the number of on screen graphics and the positions of the sprites in memory if you are going to try and, you know, have more than eight visible hardware sprites on screen or you're going to have more than four visible 16 color hardware sprites on screen. But you can see there that there's quite a lot of potential there. I hope you found this tutorial interesting. Thanks for watching today and goodbye. If you enjoyed today's video, please check out my new YouTube channel known as TV Ackerman's Live. This is gonna be a live streaming channel and it's going to be um, some more casual content. It'll be me streaming some of my programming sessions, me playing games and chatting along. Um, I'm gonna try and really do a lot of technical content in there, try and explain things as I'm playing games, you know, talking about the hardware or while I'm programming. And also I'm gonna try and interact with the chat a lot. So if you really enjoyed today's lesson, then maybe you want more content and that will give it you. Equally, if you didn't enjoy today's lesson, if it was too hard for you, if you found it so confusing and you want something a bit lighter hearted, then it might be interesting to you as well. Though I guess you've probably already clicked off if you didn't enjoy it because 95% of my viewers give up after about two minutes. But either way, thanks for watching and goodbye.